अल्ट्रासाउंड इन प्रेगनेंसी सी अल्ट्रासाउंड इज वेरी सेफ इन प्रेगनेंसी आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू अबाउट द मैक्सिमम रेडिएशन एक्सपोजर व्हिच कैन बी गिवन टू अ प्रेगनेंट फीमेल एंड दैट इज अप टिल फाइव रैड्स नाउ अल्ट्रासाउंड इज अ वेरी वेरी सेफ इन्वेस्टिगेशन ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी इन प्रेगनेंसी इन फर्स्ट ट्राइमेस्टर वेन वी डू अल्ट्रासाउंड वी ऑलवेज प्रेफर अ ट्रांस विजाइनल स्कैन ओवर अ ट्रांस एबडोमिनल स्कैन बिकॉज ऑल स्ट्रक्चर्स दे आर विजिबल अर्ली इन अ ट्रांस विजाइनल स्कैन दैन इन ट्रांस एबडोमिनल स्कैन ऑल स्ट्रक्चर्स ऑन ट्रांस एबडोमिनल स्कैन दे विल बी विजिबल वन वीक आफ्टर दे आर विजिबल ऑन ट्रांस विजाइनल सोनोग्राफी नाउ द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ अ ट्रांस विजाइनल सोनोग्राफी प्रोब इज मोर दैन इक्वल टू फाइव मेगा hertz whereas for trans abdominal scan the frequency is 3 to 3.5 megahertz in obstetrics the modes of ultrasound which we use are basically two the b mode that is the brightness mode and the m mode which is the motion mode so as has been taught to by uh, to you by dr mayur any structure which appears black to you on ultrasound it means it is hypoechoic or it is an echoic and every fluid is uh, you know it appears black in color so in pregnancy when you are looking at the uh, intrauterine structures it's the amniotic fluid which is going to appear black to you or if there is a hydrocephalus then you are going to get a black fluid filled cavity right in the head then uh, structures which appear gray are isoechoic and structures which appear white are hyperechoic for example the bones and teeth so brightness mode is basically used for identifying all the intra you train structures whereas m mode is used to detect cardiac activity that is m mode is the motion mode now we could also use doppler ultrasound for detecting cardiac activity in early pregnancy but we don't use a doppler in early pregnancy because of its thermal effects see when you are using a doppler it can increase the maternal temperature and raising of maternal temperature that is hyperthermia it is a teratogen right so that is why doppler ultrasounds used in very early pregnancy is generally avoided because of the thermal effect now coming to intrauterine pregnancy now the first structure which you are going to see when a female is going to come to you with a urine pregnancy test positive and you are going to get an ultrasound done the first structure which you are going to see would be a gestational sac and as you know that uh, the blastocyst it is going to get implanted in the endometrium and when blastocyst implants in the endometrium implantation is interstitial blastocyst goes deep inside the endometrium to implant right so due to interstitial implantation the first sign which you get on ultrasound in pregnancy is intra decidual sign so you are going to get a gestational sac which will be very deeply situated inside the endometrium and that is what is the intra decidual sign now how does a gestational sac appear to you see this gestational sac is a fluid filled cavity so the fluid just now as i was telling you fluid is going to appear black in color so you are going to get a symmetrical fluid filled cavity which is going to have an ecogenic rim just now in the next uh, slide i am going to show you how a gestational sac appears to you so look over here in this image what you are seeing in this image you are seeing the red color arrow is pointing towards the fluid which is there in the cavity right so this red color arrow which is showing which is pointing towards the black color area that is black color area is a fluid filled cavity and then you can see this yellow arrow over here is pointing towards the whitish structure which is surrounding this black fluid filled cavity so this is what is i was telling you a gestational sac it's a symmetrical fluid filled cavity with an ecogenic rim and this ecogenic rim of uh, the gestational sac it is called as the chorionic rim right now when can you see the gestational sac gestational sac can earliest be seen on a transvaginal scan between 4 and 1/2 weeks to 5 weeks of pregnancy now when we say 4 and 1/2 weeks it means 4 weeks 3 days to 5 weeks of pregnancy and all of you know from where is pregnancy calculated pregnancy is always calculated from the first day of the last menstrual 
period now one very important thing uh, which you should understand is that a gestational sac is going to tell you that yes female is pregnant but it is not going to confirm whether it is an intrauterine pregnancy or whether it is an extrauterine pregnancy because in intrauterine pregnancy you get a true gestational sac whereas in case of extrauterine pregnancy or ectopic pregnancy you get a pseudo gestational sac so yes gestational sac confirms pregnancy but it is not diagnostic of intrauterine pregnancy it is not going to confirm the location of the pregnancy now as i told you just now gestational sac can first be visible at four and a half weeks to five weeks after the first day of the last menstrual period so this means that suppose there is a female in whom urine pregnancy test comes out to be positive on the day of the missed period and she has a doubt whether it is an ectopic pregnancy or whether it is an intrauterine pregnancy so on the day of the missed period that means before 4 weeks 3 days can, would uh, doing an ultrasound help in any ways no because if i do tvs before 4 weeks 3 days even the gestational sac would not be visible so in that case how can i help this patient who wants to know who wants to get an idea whether she has an intrauterine pregnancy or an extrauterine pregnancy so look over here this question this is a very important clerical vignette so suppose uh, a question comes to you that a patient comes to your office with her last menstrual period 4 weeks back she denies any symptoms like nausea fatigue urinary frequency or breast tenderness she thinks that she may be pregnant uh, because she has not had her periods yet she is very anxious to find out because she has a history of ectopic pregnancy which of the following is the most appropriate action now this female wants to know not only whether she is pregnant or not she is very anxious because her previous pregnancy was an ectopic pregnancy so let us look at the options option a order a serum quantitative pregnancy test option b listen to the fetal heart sounds by a handheld doppler so at what gestational age can you hear to the fetal heart sounds by doppler a dop with the help of a doppler you can listen to fetal heart sounds by 10 weeks of pregnancy right so this means option b is absolutely incorrect option c perform an abdominal scan so just now i was telling you that on tvs a gestational sac can be visible by 4 weeks 3 days that's the earliest right and on abdominal scan it will be visible even after 1 week later so this means that performing an abdominal scan on the day of her missed period is not going to be helpful right do a urine pregnancy test okay so if i do a urine pregnancy test i will be able to tell her that yes she is pregnant but will i be able to relieve her anxiety that whether it is an intrauterine or an extrauterine pregnancy no so the option left with me is order a serum quantitative pregnancy test so please remember that at less than 4 weeks 3 days whenever you have to differentiate between an ectopic pregnancy and an intrauterine pregnancy you should get serial assessment of hcg done although this is not diagnostic right it is not diagnostic at all later on you still have to do tvs after one week now what is this hcg level going to tell me so there is something which is called as the discriminatory score or the critical value of hcg it is that value of hcg above which a gestational sac should positively in 100% cases you should be able to see a gestational sac in case of intrauterine pregnancy so that value of hcg above which in case of intrauterine pregnancy in 100% cases on ultrasound sound a g sac would be visible is called as discriminatory score or critical value of hcg the critical value of hcg for a trans vaginal scan is 2000 international units and for a trans abdominal scan it is 6500 international units so in this patient what i'm going to do is i am going to get an hcg level done if her hcg levels are more than 2000 and i do not get a sac i am not seeing a sac inside the uterus right on tvs then that is suggestive of ectopic pregnancy
clear to all of you so in whenever you get a patient who is less than 4 weeks 3 days pregnant and she wants to know whether it's a case of ectopic or intrauterine pregnancy please do not say that i am going to get a tvs done you are going to get serial assessment of hcg done now you going to ask me that ma'am why serial assessment this is because in early intrauterine pregnancies the hcg levels doubles nearly doubles after every 48 hours right whereas in ectopic pregnancy the levels will increase but they are not going to double right so when i am confused whether i am dealing with ectopic pregnancy or whether i am dealing with intrauterine pregnancy we should get an hcg level done because number one the critical uh, score or the discriminatory score is going to help us in uh, finding out whether we are dealing with ectopic pregnancy or whether we are dealing with intrauterine pregnancy and number two the trend of hcg levels after 48 hours if we are getting a doubling trend of hcg after 48 hours that indicates an intrauterine pregnancy if we are getting that the trend the tra- hcg levels are increasing but it is not nearly doubling that's a slow rise and i have taught to you in detail about this when i have dealt with ectopic pregnancy right so over here you just need to remember that at less than 4 weeks 3 days ultrasound is not beneficial you have to get a serial assessment of hcg done now i want you to go back to this uh, ultrasound image of gestational sac now in a gestational sac what we do is when we see a gestational sac we are going to take mean of three perpendicular diameters of the gestational sac so a mean of three perpendicular diameters of gestational sac is called as mean sac diameter and this mean sac diameter it can be used to determine the gestational age in very early pregnancy in very early pregnancy the with the diameter or the uh, you know measurement which can help you in knowing the gestational age is mean sac diameter clear so gestational sac is the first structure which you see in case of pregnancy now as i told you if you are getting a gestational sac it is going to confirm pregnancy but it is not going to confirm the location right so if you are getting a gestational sac in uterus it could be a true gestational sac of intrauterine pregnancy or it in the uterus only it could be a pseudo gestational sac of ectopic pregnancy what is a pseudo gestational sac i'll let you know in a while now suppose you are seeing a gestational sac in the tube now if you get a gestational sac in the tube please remember it is a sign which is suggestive of ectopic pregnancy a gestational sac in tube is not diagnostic of ectopic pregnancy like a gestational sac in uterus is not diagnostic of intrauterine pregnancy similarly a gestational sac in tube is not diagnostic of ectopic pregnancy it is just suggestive of ectopic pregnancy the other thing is suppose on ultrasound i am seeing two gestational sacs in the uterus so if i am getting two gestational sacs in the uterus what would that mean that would mean that probably it's a case of twin pregnancy and it is a dichorionic twin probably it is suggestive of a dichorionic twin so gestational sac is it is something which tells you about the chorionicity although again it is not diagnostic right so if you are getting two gestational sacs it indicates that yes it's a twin pregnancy and it is suggestive of a dichorionic twin now the next structure which appears is a yolk sac so yolk sac is the first structure to appear inside a gestational sac now if a yolk sac is appearing inside an intrauterine sac then it confirms that it is an intrauterine pregnancy and if a yolk sac is appearing inside a gestational sac which is present in the tubes 
then it confirms ectopic pregnancy so a gestational sac was not confirming the location appearance of yolk sac confirms the location when a yolk sac appears in a gestational sac inside the uterus it uh, confirms that it's an intrauterine pregnancy and when a gestational sac comes inside a gestational sac which is uh, in the tubes it confirms it as a case of ectopic pregnancy now a gest a uh, yolk sac can be seen on transvaginal sonography at 5 weeks and it appears like a single bleb inside the gestational sac so it will appear like a bleb inside the gestational sac and this is how it is going to appear now in this image what you are going to see in this image the white color arrow is pointing towards the gestational sac and this black color arrow which is pointing towards an ecogenic small uh, ecogenic circle which is present inside the gestational sac this black arrow is showing to you the yolk sac and this black arrow the you know the yolk sac in the next image which is there on the right hand side i have highlighted the yolk sac with green color for all of you so that you can see that this over here is the yolk sac so how is a yolk sac appearing a yolk sac is appearing like a bleb inside the gestational sac now in case of twin pregnancy i was telling you just now that gestational sac is a marker of chorionicity whereas yolk sac is a marker of amniocity so suppose if you are getting something like what i have shown in image a what you are seeing in image a in image a you are seeing two gestational sacs and you are seeing two yolk sacs right so this means it is suggestive of dichorionic diamniotic twins right as i told you gestational sac is for chorionicity and yolk sac is for amniocity now look at image b in image b what you are seeing in image b you are seeing a single big circle which is your gestational sac and inside that single big circle you are seeing two yolk sacs so what is this suggestive of it is suggestive of monochorionic diamniotic twins but then please remember if they ask you what is the uh, best time for determining chorionicity the best time for determining chorionicity is 10 to 14 weeks and this is not the best sign for chorionicity and amniocity right best time for chorionicity i am going to tell you and the best sign for chorionicity i am also going to tell you so best time to do ultrasound for chorionicity is between 10 to 14 weeks and the best sign you will come to know as we proceed ahead now look at this image over here what you are seeing over here this is a big circle and that is a big gestational sac and inside the big gestational sac you can see the two small yolk sacs that means probably it is a monochorionic diamniotic twin so the gestational sac in the right hand side image i have highlighted it with gre green color for all of you and the two yolk sacs i have highlighted them in orange color for all of you right so this is what you needed to know about yolk sac now the next structure to appear will be a fetal pole now a fetal pole is seen on tvs between 5 weeks to 5 and a half weeks and whenever we say 5 and a half weeks what does that mean 5 weeks 3 days now when fetal pole is uh, visible now you will be able to measure the crown rump length what is crown rump length crown rump length is the distance between the cephalic pole and the rump right and what is the significance of fetal pole significance of fetal pole is same like yolk sac so if fetal pole is present in yolk sac in a which is and this yolk sac is present inside a gestational sac in tubes with or without cardiac activity it confirms ectopic pregnancy so the confirmatory sign for ectopic pregnancy is either if you see a yolk sac inside the gestational sac or if you see yolk sac and fetal pole inside the gestational sac which is present in tubes with or without cardiac activity please remember only gestational sac in the tubes is not confirmatory sign for ectopic pregnancy also so now look at this image over here in this image what you are seeing in this image you are seeing that inside the gestational sac i am seeing the 
fetus being developed right i can see the fetal pole and now what i am going to do is i am going to measure the length of this fetal pole from the cephalic end to the rump and that is what is called as crown rump length so if you look closely there are two yellow colored asterisks which are marked and these two yellow colored asterisks the the on top is the one which is marking the crown area and at the bottom is the one which is marking the rump area with a straight line i'm going to join them and i'm going to measure it that is what is going to tell me the crown rump length now critical cut off to visualize fetal pole in other words to crown rump length is gestational sac diameter 25 mm what do you understand by this this means that if the diameter of the gestational sac becomes more than 25 mm and a fetal pole is not visible then that's an abnormal pregnancy right so i am telling you that the critical cut off to visualize fetal pole or crown rump length inside a gestational sac is a mean sac diameter that is diameter of the gestational sac 25 mm so this is the maximum a gestational sac will normally show you a fetal pole when it is less than 25 mm right the maximum cut off is 25 mm now suppose if there is a female who comes to you with uh, you know she is around 4 and 1/2 weeks pregnant or maybe 5 weeks pregnant and you get an ultrasound done and on ultrasound you see that the gestational sac is 14 mm right and the fetal pole is not visible so the ultrasound report comes to you gestational sac seen fetal pole not seen So are you going to consider this as an abnormal pregnancy? No. You have to wait up till 25 mm. Unless and until gestational sac is 25 mm, up till that time I have to wait. Now suppose I tell this uh, female that okay, fine. Uh, I'm going to do a repeat ultrasound next week. Now next week I see that her gestational sac has become 28 mm and still we are not getting a fetal pole inside. Now that is something which is abnormal and this is what is called as an embryonic pregnancy or blighted ovum. So in order to call a pregnancy as blighted ovum or an embryonic pregnancy the definition is that the gestational sac is more than equal to 25 mm and still fetal pole is not seen that is what is abnormal and that is called as a missed abortion a very early kind of a missed abortion and this, there is a special name for this abortion which is blighted ovum or an embryonic pregnancy right this is very very important for all of you